My name is Roland Wu. I'm the Director of Product Management at Penguin Computing. Um, my team is in charge of all hardware at uh, Penguin Computing. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, where we fit into uh, artificial intelligence uh, with our HPC discipline and uh, some of our um, you know, pre-existing deployments. Um, show of hands, how many of you guys know who Penguin Computing is? Okay, so I can skip this slide, right? Um, so really quick, we're incorporated in 1999. Uh, we have about 177 employees and uh, we focus mostly on uh, high performance computing as our bread and butter. We've expanded into uh, oil and gas and financial trading and, um, and uh, cloud, uh, cloud capacity um, computing. Um, we were recently acquired by uh, Smart uh, Global um, uh, in June 2018. So uh, we're currently in the um, a simulation phase, but right now we are operating as a, a, a separately separate entity um, as part of their uh, uh, part of their uh, high performance and specialty compute group. Uh, we currently have a bu uh, one building that uh, that allows us to do about 250 racks uh, per month. Uh, we um, got a second building next door to us that allows us to uh, triple our capacity. So we expect uh, combined we should be able to do over a thousand racks uh, uh, per per month. So uh, some of our existing deployments uh, to date is uh, we have uh, here. Uh, we have 10, uh, 10 systems currently on the top 500, uh, mostly from our Department of Energy contract called the CTS-1. Uh, that is a Broadwell-based solution um, uh, using um, in an OCT form factor. It was actually a solution that was uh, defined by our customer that had a very specific motherboard but really liked the uh, OCT's um, uh, infrastructure. So we kind of uh, managed the two technology together and uh, that was part of our solution for the Department of Energy and all the different uh, labs that want to use uh, commodity hardware. So we were able to put uh, 10 systems in there, including number 30, which is for the Lawrence Livermore in uh, November 2016. Um, in the field of artificial intelligence, I can't talk about who it is, but it's, it's the largest AI cluster in the world for a very large social media company that happens to be uh, number nine in the uh, green 500. And they are definitely pushing us on our limits of our capacity to build up per, per month. Um, in Enterprise Data Center, uh, we are still innovating in all different uh, spaces. Uh, last year, we uh, set a new record in uh, HF, uh, high frequency trading um, solutions, um, as well as storage base, we set a new record for uh, data transfer solutions. Marketing gave me that information. I'll need it to reference our website for the specific details of that, but I have a feeling this is probably solar flare. Right? Um, with respect to open compute, um, with, uh, with uh, CTS-1, the Department of Energy contract, as well as other, um, other derivative um, um, opportunities, we deployed over 300 OCP racks to date, and as a continuous contribution to OCP and environment, our uh, CTO, uh, Philip Percorni, is actually on the HPC representation of the OCP incubation committee. So, real quick. so. What does payment computing offer for artificial intelligence? We provide the application of HPC discipline into the technology that, um, that you guys see. Uh, today, we've heard um, from Intel, we've heard from WeWin, um, we've heard from uh, NVIDIA. Where we play is we apply all of the uh, uh, solution together um, that helps tackle the problems that you're trying to solve. Um, some of the WeWin solutions that was mentioned, the SC300 with the headmill plus the XC200 JBOG. The, a solution like that, where we kind of play in is we help look at your application and say, does that solution make sense? Um, a headmill that would be typically a dual socket Intel solution PCI, uh, uh, with a PCI interconnect to XC200 JBOG, which is just a bunch of GPUs. We, we look at um, how many PCI connections do we have? Is it one or is it two or is it four? Uh, something that Jackie mentioned previously. That all ties into latency and how to get the, get the data trained and how it gets back to the outside world. Um, is that or is that not uh, a hardware that would accelerate your application? That is some of the things that we would help um, identify for you. Um, SC700 GP server, which is a 19 inch Skylake 16 GPU PCIe Gen 3. This is a behemoth to put the uh, 16 GPUs in. I believe there is one back there. So this is really great for the application where a customer just needs a ton of GPUs. But then uh, we will bring in discussions where how, how important is peer-to-peer -peer communication? Do all 
16 talk to the other 16 at the same um, performance bandwidth? Obviously not, because um, due to limitations of PCIe, there are uh, PLX topologies to be aware of. There are different uh, traces and paths and hops to go from one, one GPU to the other GPU that uh, we could help you when we map out the performance of um, GPU 1 through GPU 16, which two are accelerated the best and help you with your code to uh, make sure the bulk of your stuff is within the fastest bandwidth and the ones that not so much, we try not to take advantage of it. Or we even look at a better application or a better hardware that might be a better, better suited. When we look at, let's say, SC500 GPU server, which is OCP Skylake 16 GPU PCIe Gen 3, this is infrastructure discussion. This is where we look at the OCP um, having a 12 volt single bus bar or three bus bar. You know, is that important for your customer that's looking for scalability, uh, future proofing your design, um, improving your, um, uh, your CapEx, reducing your, op so that way you could reduce your operation expense. Taking the existing great stuff of 19 inch and applying it to uh, OCP infrastructure, which is what the Department of Energy uh, wanted from us. So we would help you look into your data center, future-proofing it so that um, um, you don't have to uh, waste money on the sheet metals and power supply that actually doesn't go EOL based on the, um, the product life cycles of processor-driven GPUs. Um, and not to mention power, 16x GPU in a single bus bar would be pretty, pretty tough. You may not be able to have too many um, GPUs per rack. So that's, that's something that, um, that uh, Penguin would offer where we would help you guys figure out what kind of uh, power technology will allow you to m put the most number of GPUs within a rack that your data center can supply to the rack. Um, I can keep on going. The XC200 G2 JBOG is with EIA 16 GPU PCI Gen 4. Now that's interesting. Gen 3 versus Gen 4 um, right now. Um, now, uh, networking, that's a, that's a major concern. Right now, six, uh, Gen 3, 16X, uh, you probably do like 100 gigs. But with, the, uh, with Gen 4, you could, you could far exceed that. And a lot of these um, technology now is really being bottlenecked by networking. So having Gen 4 pairing that with rather than a, uh, actually I shouldn't be commenting about another competing product, but um, technology that had Gen 4 as a, as a host node, that allows you to take advantage of um, higher bandwidth um, networking. So, those are something that we would, you know, uh, give you kind of guidance on. You know, if the network is a concern for you guys, we would help you guys choose a Gen 4 solution and pair that with the right uh, head node for that GPU. Um, I didn't notice in any slide on the HGX2, which is really interesting, which is the uh, 16 GPU SXM2. Um, that's not right, it's, it's not PCI, it's actually uh, SXM2 based, so ignore that. Oh wait, no, no, sorry, that's a PCI based for Gen 4 for network connections. So this would be interesting technology where a customer just really wants high peer-to-peer -peer communication, taking advantage of NV, NV switch. So I'm really looking forward to when, uh, when WeWin brings, it up, uh, brings this out um, because it allows customers that have to get 16 GPUs and not be hobbled by the uh, PLX PCIe topology where you have multiple hops just to get from one node to the uh, other node from a GPU standpoint. So this is what I mean about uh, payment computing applying HPC discipline. You know, we look at all the topology, we look at um, avoiding the data going through the UPI, UPI, that's, that's a smaller, uh, it's a lower, smaller bandwidth be communication between CPUs, you know, CPU socket one and two. Um, I mentioned the PLX topology and network latency, performance, and Gen 3 and Gen 4. Those are something that, what, that, that those are things that Penguin think about when you're looking at these solutions that otherwise you may not be thinking of. And this is where we'll help you guys create a solution um, from all the technologies that's available to you from the previous pre presenter. So, so that was on the WeWin, WeWin side. So what about the NVIDIA side? Well, we saw a lot of great products. Um, training, we saw the Volta uh, PCI, uh, V100 PCIe. Um, you sure there should have been SXM2 as well there, uh, GeForce Titan V, a lot of products you know, back there that can support uh, that solution. Inferences, I'm glad somebody mentioned the, uh, the T4, um, it, it was announced uh, yesterday. That would be a really great product for uh, hyperscale. Um, we have an image here of a product that uh, I believe is also in the back. This is a uh, WeWin's uh, 1U, two node um, compute uh, device that actually has um, by 16, uh, slot you know, um, per, per node. What's very common in, in a lot of uh, Penguin's um, deployment is customers that have an existing hyperscale design and uh, they have a low power, high density solution. 
that is uh, CPU compute based. And um, let's say you're, you reach your uh, capacity, um, you need to have um, more, uh, uh, more capabilities, more computing power, but you're limited by your uh, CPU compute. Well, a quick way is either you could build out a whole new data center or you can scale up your current design that may have a three by 16 with uh, NVIDIA inference solution. That will give you a really quick way to accelerate your existing hardware with uh, NVIDIA's uh, technology. This is incredibly popular, especially now that they maintain the, P4, uh, the, uh, the T4 being a low, low profile uh, solution. They, earlier generation, they, made, they had a setback with having a full height solution that would that kind of slow things down a bit, but now I'm really happy to hear that it's now back in a low profile form factor, so that makes it almost readily adoptable to any existing hypershare deployment that has a free low profile by 16 slot. Um, even a by eight slot would still take advantage of the, um, of the acceleration because of how, of the ROI and the cost of each individual card. It's still way cheaper than it is to buy a whole new node or, you know, and obviously compared to building that whole new data center. Um, so, so this is kind of where we, so when we see these solutions, uh, we, we look uh, at this, you know, specs, ten, tensor core, high bandwidth memory, and we link, switch. These are kind of things that we will help you guys, um, based on your application, we would say those application and trying to do the uh, X number of jobs per hour, per day, whatever, those are all relevant to these specific specification. That's how we'll help you guys spec out what product would work from, um, from an NVIDIA standpoint. Uh, they have a lot of great technology and a lot of great specs, but it's very difficult to connect from if you're trying to build a million widgets to, you know, per hour, per day, or develop it, you know, X number of data, you know, per hour, per day, what kind of spec is, is important to accelerate that? That's where Penguin Computer can help you um, uh, solving that problem. Um, and the biggest thing really is you know, le uh, network topology scale out and uh, expansion. So my next slide, I'll be talking about um, how to uh, grow with the AI hardware. So I mentioned previously that um, with uh, CTS-1, the Department of Energy contract, uh, we work with customer to use an existing uh, board that they like apply that into OCP, which is a new infrastructure that they want to try, and kind of marry the best of both worlds. But we learned a lot with that, with that process, and every customer has their own problem with a unique uh, uh, set of problem that re uh, requires solving. Um, we would help bridge that gap between you know, customer, Penguin, and uh, NVIDIA, or, or we, we win, to look at solutions uh, that would solve your you know, problems. With a lot of things that we run into, is let's say we have a customer that wants to do well liquid cooling. That is definitely something that we can offer a customer. But we had a situation where you install these liquid cooling solutions, but there's no sensors available to, um, to monitor. So you definitely don't want to have a pump go down on a processor and not know, uh, not know about it. So we would be in a position to work with the partners to come up with a way to, to get some sensors in to, to monitor, uh, either um, do some kind of uh, tricky multiplexing, find existing uh, sensor that could actually uh, look at <coughs> multiple devices. Um, those are kind of things that we will look, uh, we will look into. Our biggest thing that we provided back to the o Open Compute Committee is um, power, specifically power shelf slew rate. Um, as I mentioned, Penguin is uh, mostly high performance computing. OCP, you know, with Facebook has mostly been um, cloud, you know, cloud. So uh, their products, their applications, are pretty steady. Um, ours is very spiky. You know, spikes up, spikes down really quick. And what we found is the PowerShell slew rates, they just can't keep up with uh, our, our work. So we actually provided feedback in that last uh, open OCP summit um, to the PowerShell manufacturer that, hey, if you guys want to work into AI and, and high performance computing, your PowerShells are not, are not ready for it because they can't handle you know, spikes. So those are kind of things where we would you know, bring, help you guys uh, work with you to solve a problem and bring it back to the manufacturer and say, hey, you know, for this application, you know, these are the kind of things that needs to be changed and improved. Um, sticking with the uh, infrastructure, um, we talked a lot about uh, compute, but compute is only one aspect. There's still storage and there's still network. And uh, we've already uh, worked with a lot of partners such as, in, such as Intel to have uh, switches um, that are uh, 12 volts uh, DC clip compatible. Um, you know, we are product line this, you know, I don't want to pitch our product line, but we have a, a, a line of switches um, that allows you to work with multiple infra uh, infrastructure, whether it be EIA or OCP, so that you can actually have a complete ecosystem of products um, within the infrastructure that you choose. In the event there are, uh, there are products that you don't 
that, that just doesn't exist in, um, in OCP, you know, we would come up with a trick solution. Um, we came up with something called an Angus rack. Anybody know, you know, uh, uh, ACDC, um, the band? So it's actually uh, it's a, a single rack with uh, a DC power on the top half and then 19 inch on the bottom half. So that's why we call that Angus rack. So it was a generation gap for me, so I guess the older folks probably will get that. <laughs> it's new to me. But this is where, um, this is a unique solution with our labs is because there's a lot of storage hardware that's just not in uh, OCP, uh, but there's a lot of great uh, compute stuff that's in OCP. So this allows us to marriage both 19 inch and OCP so that you could have the best of both worlds in a single rack or however, how, whatever you define as your scalable unit. I think the previous presentation has said of RSD that um, the rack is one, one unit. Um, the rack could be multiple units. We've seen in our HPC deployment, a single unit is actually three racks or four racks, or it could be eight racks. Um, the biggest one, which is where um, a lot of our hyperscale customer looks to us is network topology. Um, it's, um, it's pretty easy to, to know one deployment, how many systems that you're gonna have and put together the subscription rate and the cords uh, of everything you need to make it work. But you obviously want to put your customer in a position to grow. So they want to um, add more capacity and more compute, uh, more whatever to, to, to scale out. And they still want to preserve some of the redundancy. So this is where we would help and we would define a proper network topology that allows the data center to grow with uh, your, growing, your growing business. Um, that, is, that is something where um, we would definitely work with you guys um, to, to come up with. Um, uh, in our partnership with, let's, let, let, with WeWin, um, they uh, are really great partners when we kind of give them a guidance on this is what we want to do. But if you were to ask them to you know, uh, figure out what is a great, uh, great way to scale, there are certain questions that's not just their, ex uh, that's not their level of expertise, but they're great on recreating things and making sure that um, when whatever I create as a first sample or proof of concept, I can reproduce that a million times and you could have same level of, of quality which leads me to my next slide here. Um, I did not do this animation, so bear with me. This is actually a WeWin slide. This is a really great representation of why we like working with WeWin. Um, not only do they, um, they don't just test the products, they, they, they validate it in a way that um, is a different level than even what Penguin Community is used to. Um, they do a lot of testing that has to do with stability, stress cycling, failure detection, but really the more interesting thing to me is firmwares and driver updates where when they do their testing, they look at even the software, the BIOS, the VBIOS, those level and, and, uh, and verify that these are the specific ones, uh, these are the specific firmwares that would, um, that would make everything work together and they have really great revision control that you could expect if you were bu you buying this today, three months later, you could expect the exact same thing and if it doesn't, then you would at least get a notification of why it's gonna be different and you guys could choose uh, whether or not you want to proceed with those changes. So that was really great for us um, with respect to hyperscale because uh, hyperscale is, just, is not just one deployment of like 100 or 500 racks, it could be 1,000 racks over the course of 12 and 18 months. So we definitely do not want the first batch of systems to be different than the last batch of systems because that would cause them a lot of, uh, lot of problems. And then, Finally, um, with uh, what they have uh, with respect to the L10s and L11s, which is um, working with them to make sure they have all the components they need to do a full rack level testing, they would actually complement the testing that we do at Penguin Computing by doing the you know checks and uh, the firmer uh, checks, unit checks, uh, unit stress testing, rack stress testing, and doing final checks, which you know based on whatever customers or requirements or even Penguin's requirement before it comes to our facility so that we can focus on our core strength, which is making sure like this thing is optimized properly for the AI application that, that, uh, that you guys are, are, are working on, so that we're not always spending so much time figuring out why is that hard right now working or why that memory bin is failing. We, we focus on our core competence, which is the application side, and, and we went through their strength, which is the component and hard, hardware side. So, what does Penguin Community offer for AI? That was the question at the beginning. We provide expertise to solve the toughest problems, and we partner with great people. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>